the nasal cavity is divided into two by a vertical partition called the nasal septum. The nasal septum comprises of a cartilaginous and a bony part. The bony part comprises of the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and the vomer. The cartilaginous part of the nasal septum is broad, quadrilateral in shape, thicker at its margins than at the center. It occupies the gap between the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and vomer in the recent state and occupies a space in the anterior part of the nasal septum. This is a space occupied by the quadrilateral septal cartilage. The nasal septal cartilage thicker at its margin above it is attached to the inner aspect of the nasal bones. Below that it is continuous with the inner aspect of the upper lateral cartilages. Below it is connected with the medial crurae of the lower lateral cartilage. Behind it is attached to the anterior border of the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and the anterior border of the vomer and inferiorly it is inserted into the maxillary crest. The nasal septal cartilage prolongs backwards as a small tongue between the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and the vomer and this posterior prolongation is called the sphenoidal process. Inferiorly, the septal cartilage does not reach as low as the nasal septum and here it is composed of the medial crurae of the lower lateral cartilage and fibro fatty tissue. This is the medial crurae of the lower lateral cartilage. And here we see the composition of the lower part of the nasal septum comprising of the medial crurae of the lower lateral cartilage and fibro fatty tissue. This part of the septal cartilage is mobile and therefore called septum mobile nasi. There are bony contributions to the nasal septum. These are the inner aspect of the spine of the frontal bone, the inner aspect of the nasal bone, the crest of the nasal bones, the crest of the palatine bones, the crest of the maxilla and lastly the rostrum of the sphenoid. This is a small space in between the attachments of the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and the vomer. For purposes of description, the nasal septal cartilage is divided into two. This is by an imaginary vertical line drawn from the spine of the frontal bone to the spine of maxilla. This divides the cartilage into an anterior half and a posterior half. The anterior half is essential to maintain the architecture of the external nose and cannot be resected. Deviations of the anterior part of the cartilage septum therefore are dealt by a conservative surgical procedure called septoplasty. The posterior half does not contribute to the external architecture and hence can be safely resected. However, the posterior half contains a growth center which continues to grow till the age of 18 years as a consequence of which deviations of the posterior part of the nasal septum should not be resected less than 18 years of age and as therefore are dealt by the procedure called septoplasty. However, deviations above the age of 18 years can be safely resected and this is done by a surgical procedure called submucosal resection of the nasal septum. What happens if we resect the posterior half less than 18 years? Since the posterior half contains a growth center that contributes to the growth, if the posterior half is resected less than 18 years of age, it leads to developmental hypoplasia of the mid third of the face. Herein we have reviewed in detail the structural and functional anatomy of the nasal septum.